Hello students, welcome once again to Chemistry. In this video, we want to talk about the calculations involved in this continuous titration, this continuous double indicator titration. Now here, it is discontinuous because we will first perform the titration using phenolphthalein as our indicator. After that, we will discard the solution and perform a new titration, but this time using methyl orange as our indicator. So here we perform two separate titrations with two separate indicators. Here, there are some things we need to know. One, when the phenolphthalein is used, just as we have discussed in the continuous titration, the acid will neutralize only half of the sodium carbonate present. Remember, our solution B is a mixture of sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. Once again, when phenolphthalein is present, the acid will neutralize only half, only half of the sodium carbonate. The remaining half and the sodium bicarbonate wouldn't be neutralized. But even the half that we are going to neutralize, we are going to convert that half to sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride. So this sodium bicarbonate will add to the already existing sodium bicarbonate present there. And they will all be left there unconverted or not neutralized. It is the reason why when we perform the reaction using the phenolphthalein indicator, it was very easy to achieve the end point, or let's say the end point came so early because we didn't do a complete job. We just took one of the substances present and neutralized half of that substance. And even that neutralization wasn't a complete neutralization. That's what we did. So let's assume the volume of HCl that was required in this titration to neutralize half of only this sodium carbonate to be why? Let's assume it to be Y. Let's keep that one somewhere. We'll come and talk about that one very soon. When methyl orange is used for this titration, the acid will first pick the sodium bicarbonate, all sodium bicarbonate present. Then it will convert all the sodium bicarbonate to sodium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. Complete neutralization. After that, the HCl will come and pick all the sodium carbonate present here and convert them to, to sodium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. So it takes a longer period before we get to our end point because we are doing a thorough job over here when methyl orange is available. So over here, let's assume the volume of acid used in this methyl orange titration to be X. Let's talk about our animated delivery here. Our animated delivery. So what we are saying is our Y is the volume of acid that was used in the phenolphthalein titration. And what did the Y do? It just neutralized half sodium carbonate. And even that neutralization wasn't even complete. Mm -hmm. That is what happened. So if we want to Neutralize all the sodium carbonate. We just make sodium carbonate the subject. So all sodium carbonate will then require two times Y. Did you get it? So acid HCl just needed half of this one. To be converted. That's what it did. So if you want to convert all of these ones, they will need twice as much acid. You will need twice as much as the acid present. Then, let's talk about our second titration involving methyl orange. What did methyl orange do? Over here, we are saying that the volume of acid over here is represented by the letter X. So X occurred in the presence of methyl orange. And what did we do over there? We converted 
all sodium carbonate. Then all sodium bicarbonate. That's exactly what we did. So all sodium carbonate has already been represented as 2y over here. So we can say that x is equal to 2y plus all sodium bicarbonate. So if you want to know the volume of acid that was needed to neutralize all the sodium bicarbonates, we just have to make all sodium bicarbonate the subject. So you are going to get all sodium bicarbonate. Carbonate is equal to x minus 2y. These are our two key points. So this means that the actual volume of acid, the actual volume of acid that reacted with all sodium carbonates is giving us two times average tighter in phenolphthalein reaction. Remember, in that titration, we built, we developed two tables. And for the phenolphthalein titration, we had an air average tighter to be 4.85 centimeters cubed. So to know the volume of acid that reacted with all the sodium carbonate, just multiply the two by the four by 4.85. Now let's look at this part two. This means that the actual volume of HCl that reacted with all sodium bicarbonate is giving us x, which is our average tighter in our methyl orange titration minus two times our average tighter in phenolphthalein titration. That's it. So for all sodium bicarbonate, all sodium, for all sodium, sorry, carbonate, it will become two times our 4.85. And that should give us 9.70 centimeters cubed. For all sodium bicarbonate, we are going to get 21.0, which was the end point. Oh, sorry, the average titer for the uh, metal orange titration. 21.00, which was the average titer for the metal orange titration, minus two times that of the phenolphthalein titration, which is 4.85. So we have 21 minus 9.70. So 21 minus 9.70 will give us 11.30 centimeters cube. So that is the volume of the acid that was required to neutralize all sodium by carbonate in that mixture. Now, how do we use these values to calculate the concentrations of sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate? As usual, we are going to use our two equations. So I'll state the first one, and I'll use the first one to calculate the concentration of sodium bicarbonate. Then I use the second one to calculate the concentration of the sodium carbonate. So the sodium bicarbonate one, you have to use NaHCO3 plus HCl, sodium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus water. Now the mole ratio, let's call this one B and call this one A. HCl is A, sodium bicarbonate is B. So amount of B as a ratio of amount of A is giving us 1 over 1. And that is, that means when you cross multiply, amount of A will be amount of B. However, we know amount is, cal is calculated by multiplying the concentration by the volume. So amount of A is concentration of A times volume of A. 
amount of B is concentration of B times volume of B. So amount of A, we put C A V A over there. So C A V A is equal to amount of B. We put C B V B over there. We are looking for the concentration of sodium bicarbonate, which is our B. So concentration of B is C of A, V of A over V of B. Now remember, our C of A is our concentration of HCl. And in our previous video, we said that one is 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube. Our volume of A. Now this one, volume of A is the volume of acid that was required to react completely with sodium bicarbonate. And that one is giving us X minus 2Y. X minus 2Y. Where X represents the average titer from the methyl orange titration. We had that one to be 21.00. Minus 2 times Y. Where Y represents the average titer in the phenolphthalein titration, which is 4.85. So we get 21.00 minus 9.70. That will give us 11.30 centimeters cubed. Then our volume of B, as usual, is the volume of our pipettes. And we made use of 25 centimeter cubed pipettes. We can fix these values in the formula then get concentration of B as 0 0.1 times volume of A, which is 11.3 divided by volume of B, which is 25. So we are going to get 1.130 divided by 25. And when you take your calculator and punch it, you are going to get... 0 0.0452 mole per decimeter cube. That is the concentration of sodium bicarbonate in the mixture. What about the concentration of sodium carbonate in the mixture? We will use our second equation. Using our second equation, which is sodium carbonate plus two moles of HCl, that's one mole of sodium carbonate plus two moles of HCl, going to produce two moles of sodium chloride plus one mole of water plus another one mole of CO2. If this is our B, our sodium carbonate is our B, and our hydrochloric acid is our A, we can say amount of A as a ratio of amount of B is 2 divided by 1. When you cross multiply, you are going to get amount of A times 1 is equal to 2 times amount of B. But we know amount of substance is given as concentration times volume, which means amount of A is given as concentration of A times volume of A, and amount of B is given as uh, concentration of B times volume of B. We can chip these two into the formula and get amount of A as CAVA times 1. We can ignore it. It's equal to 2 times amount of B, which is CBVB, where B is our sodium carbonate. So to calculate the concentration of sodium carbonate, we make it the subject. Concentration of sodium carbonate is given as CAVA over 2 times V. B, where CA is our concentration of HCl, giving us 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube. Our VA is our volume of acid that was required to completely react with all the sodium carbonate, and that one was given as 2Y, where Y is our average volume of acid in our phenolphthalein titration, so 4.85, and that gives us 9.70 centimeters cubed. Then our volume of B 
as usual, is the volume of our pipette, 25 centimeters cubed. Chipping these values into this formula, we are going to get CB is equal to 0 0.1 times 9.70 divided by 2 times 25. We are going to get 0 0.97 divided by 50. When you take our calculator and punch 0 0.97 divided by 50, we are going to get 0 0.019. 4 more per decimeter cube. And that is how we use this continuous double indicator titration to calculate the concentrations of the substances that come together to form the mixture. In this example, we made use of sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate mixture. We didn't know the concentration of each one present. But we had 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube HCl. It's a standard solution. We know its concentration accurately. So we used that one and we titrated it. We performed a titration with them. And when we did that, we had our two different endpoints. One with the phenolphthalein titration and the other one with the metal orange titration. The key over here is to note that the volume of acid that is needed to react completely with all the sodium carbonates is given as 2Y. That one is the same as it is in continuous titration. 2Y, where Y is the, end, uh, the uh, average titer in our phenolphthalein titration. Then, the volume of acid that is needed to react with all the sodium bicarbonate is given as X minus 2Y. In continuous, it was X minus Y. But in this continuous, it is X minus 2Y. And we've talked about why it is so. Mm -hmm. Because in, the, in the, this continuous, you are performing a whole different titration on its own, a separate titration using metal orange. So it will work on all sodium carbonate, all sodium bicarbonate. But in the continuous, it will work with only half of sodium carbonate remaining and all of the sodium bicarbonate present. Do you see the difference? Uh -huh. So let's keep these ones in mind. Please, visit the WASI in the uh, SSSCE 2005 practical question for Alt A. The question over there was a discontinuous double indicator titration. Try your hands on it with this approach, and I know it will work very well for you. Remember, 2y, 2y, or two times the average titer in the phenolphthalein titration. That is for either continuous or discontinuous. It helps us to calculate the volume of acid required to react with all sodium carbonate present. For the sodium bicarbonate present, in continuous is X minus Y. Average titer in metal orange titration minus average titer in phenolphthalein titration. However, in this continuous titration, all sodium bicarbonates need a volume of acid which is equal to X minus 2Y. Volume of acid or average titer in metal orange titration minus two times the average titer in the phenolphthalein titration. Thank you.